Hold on, so... How long did you say Naruto is? Okay, then. 983 years before Naruto's birth, the world is locked in endless war. Kaguya Otsutsuki, a celestial being, comes to Earth in search of the God Tree. She consumes fruit from that tree and is endowed with the Rinne Sharingan, a powerful eye-based jutsu, and becomes the only chakra wielder on Earth. She hopes to end humanity's wars with her newfound power. And we all know how that goes, right? Kaguya uses the Rinnegan to cast the infinite Tsukuyomi on humanity. This genjutsu technique traps the whole planet in an illusion manufactured by its caster. Kaguya's immense power is changed her, and she sees the infinite Tsukuyomi as the only way to defend her power from usurpers. But it also turns all humans into white zetsus. So, yeah, great plan, huh? She eventually decides to free some humans so, you know, the entire planet won't be wiped out, but destroys their memories of the experience. She has twin sons, Hagoramo and Hamura, who are also chakra wielders. Over time, Kaguya gets greedy and wants all the chakra that's been distributed to her sons for herself again. In order to steal her son's chakra, she merges with the world tree, creating Ten Tails, the original tailed beast. Her sons wage battle against her and eventually gain the upper hand. As Kaguya is about to be sealed by her son, she creates Black Zetsu, a manifestation of her will, who will survive through the centuries, working to release Kaguya once again. The twins seal the beast chakra within Hagoramo, making him the first Jinchuriki, and also seal Ten Tails Remains, the demonic statue of the Outer Path, and cast them into space, creating the moon. Hamura goes to the moon to guard the beast's body. Hagoramo Otsutsuki remains on Earth to train humans in the use of chakra, and he is known as the Sage of the Six Paths. In what is probably the cutest scene of all of Naruto, he divides the Ten Tailed Beast chakra into nine separate bodies and gives them names. These are the Biju. He tells the Biju they'll one day be reunited in a single form once again. Hagoramo has two sons, Indra and Asura. Indra, the older son, is a prodigy and quickly masters chakra manipulation. He's credited with creating ninjutsu, and he is the ancestor of the Uchiha clan. His little bro Asura is the original ancestor of the Senju and Uzumaki clans. Asura grew up in the shadow of his talented brother, but his good attitude, resilience, and strong work ethic led Hagoramo to choose him as a successor. Asura tells his dad that Indra is the obvious choice for successor, considering his many talents, but Hagoramo points out that it takes more than raw talent to be a leader, and passes his power power, six path chakra onto Asura. Black Zetsu is on the scene, ready to manipulate Indra. He stokes Indra's jealousy and suggests that he attack Asura to take the power for himself, but Indra is no match for Asura's new chakra, and he is forced to retreat, starting a generations-long feud between the brothers' descendants. 783 years before Naruto's birth, the first familiar face enters the story. 200 years after the Kaguya's reign, Fukasaku, the great toad sage of Mount Myoboku, is born, only to be disrespected by a couple of scruffy shinobi in the years to come. And then a whole lot of nothing that is relevant to this timeline happens. Until 64 years before Naruto's birth, when the Warring States period begins. Clans fight clans in ceaseless attempts to gain power, and the Senju and Uchiha clans emerge as the most formidable. As the Senju and Uchiha duke it out, their armies are whittled away, requiring even young shinobi to join battle. Kawarama Senju is one such young shinobi. He dies on the battlefield at the hands of an Uchiha. His older brothers mourn his death, and one of them, Hashirama Senju, feels his death was in vain. Hashirama will carry the sentiment into adulthood. Ten years after that, about 56 years before Naruto's birth, a bunch of old people are born. Well, they're old when they figure into Naruto's story, but they're just like regular babies at that point. I'm of course talking about that puppet lady Chio, her brother Abizo, future creepy god Danzo, and the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi. A young Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha have been palling around, skipping rocks, peeing in rivers, and generally becoming friendly rivals. As their friendship blossoms, Harashima and Madara share dreams of a future where children won't have to die on the battlefield. Their dreams aren't completely aligned though. Madara believes that the world must be ruled by one leader to prevent war, while Hashirama believes an alliance between the clans is the better path to peace. This mirrors Indra and Asura's respective feelings on how to achieve harmony. When Madara and Hashirama discover that they're from rival clans, they're forced to make a difficult decision. Hashirama remains committed to his vision of a peaceful alliance between the clans. Madara, succumbing to pressure from his family, says such peace is impossible to achieve through an alliance and ends their friendship. The weight of this decision awakens Madara as Sharingan. Just 50 years before Naruto's birth, the two rivals continue to meet in battle. They eventually become leaders in their villages, and Hashirama soundly beats Madara and the Uchiha clan on the battlefield. Madara's brother Izuna is killed by Hashirama's brother Tobirama, and on his deathbed, Izuna gives Madara his eyeballs, gross, allowing Madara to awaken the eternal Mangekyo. Hashirama again tries to broker peace between the clans, but because Madara's brother had just been killed by Tobirama, he refuses. Hashirama finally offers to kill himself to even 
within the score if that will allow for peace. Moved by this declaration, Madara finally agrees to a ceasefire. Together, the two clans form Konohagakure. Hashirama is eventually chosen to become the first Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village. Madara is unsettled by this and fears that the Senju will try to dominate the Uchiha. In the same time period, Iwagakure, the village hidden in the stones, is built. Who'd have thought? <laughs> One year later, 49 years before Naruto's birth, Madara uses his Sharingan to partially decipher a stone tablet that has been passed down through the Uchiha over generations. It was originally created by Hagoramo and warned of the dangers of the infant Tsukiyomi and the Rinnegan, but Black Zetsu altered it in order to fool the Uchiha into seeking the Rinnegan. After reading what he can of it, Madara concludes that Konoha is just a part of an endless cycle of war and peace. True cooperation between villages is impossible. The only way to achieve peace is to submit to the will of one powerful leader, which sounds real peaceful and not threatening at all, right? With that toxic ideology in mind, Madara decides to abandon Konoha. Around the same time, Sunagakure, the village hidden in the sand, is formed. And so, Kumogakure, the village hidden in the clouds, and Kirigakure, the village hidden in the mist. 43 years before Naruto's birth, Madara returns to Konoha, determined to end what he sees as an experiment gone awry. He has Kurama, the nine-tailed fox, Bijou, under his control. He faces off against Hashirama once more and is ostensibly killed. The site of the battle would be known as the Valley of the End. Ninetales, now free from Madara's control, rampages through Konoha. Kurama is too dangerous to be free, so Mito Uzuma Maki, Hashirama's wife, volunteers to have Kurama sealed inside her, becoming Ninetales' first Jinchuriki. About 35 years before Naruto's birth, the timeline gets a little fuzzy, but we know that the first shinobi world war is raging. The struggle to balance power between the five great shinobi countries creates enough tension between the Kage to destabilize their momentary peace. Hashirama distributes tailed beasts among the villages as a way to show goodwill and offer balance. When Hashirama eventually dies, he names his brother Tobirama as the second Hokage. Tobirama goes on to create the Ninja Academy, the Chunin exams, and the Konoha military police force, which is to be run by the Uchiha clan. This attempt to demonstrate goodwill towards the Uchiha comes to be seen as a means of segregating them from the rest of society. Upon Tobirama's death, he appoints Hiruzen Sarutobi as third Hokage. Nearly 15 years will pass before another life-changing event occurs in Konoha. 17 years before Naruto's birth, a teenage Teuchi decides to devote his life to making the perfect bowl of ramen. He'll go on to found Ramen Ichiraku, Naruto's favorite ramen spot. So, why are we talking about Teuchi right now. I gotta give a shout out to anyone who looked out for Naruto before he became Konoha's savior. Teuchi, you're a real one, bro. This one's for you. Around the same time, a young Kushina Uzumaki is brought to Konoha Gakure to attend the Ninja Academy. Despite being a bit of an outcast at first, Kushina happily adopts Konoha as her home. Over in Kumo Gakure, the village hidden in the clouds, our favorite Octo Ox, Eight Tails, goes on a rampage because no one gets him. A five-year-old Killer B becomes his next Jinchuriki. Little does Eight Tails know, he's about to get a friend for life in Killer B despite his host's very cringy rapping. Why does he have to rap? Near the end of the same year, about 14 years before Naruto's birth, Konoha starts the Second Shinobi World War. So, good job Madara, I guess. Konoha Gakure, Suna Gakure, and Iwa Gakure wage battle in Ame Gakure, the village hidden in the rain, which lies between the three countries. Ame Gakure's leader, Hanso, not to be confused with Danso, battles with Konoha's forces, leaving three powerful Konoha Shinobi, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru as the only survivors. The three Shinobi originally trained together as Genin under Sarutobi, which might account for their prowess in battle. Tsunade's main man, Dan Kato, dies in the war, setting Tsunade on a path to becoming a gambling addict, because that makes sense. As the Second Shinobi World War rages on, Jiraiya comes upon three orphans in Amagakure and takes them under his wing. These orphans are Nagato, Yahiko, and Conan, O'Brien. Unbeknownst to anyone, Madara gave Nagato one of his Rinnegan when Nagato was a child, which is going to get real important in about 30 years. Meanwhile, Ninetales Jinchuriki Mito nears the end of her life and passes on her bijou to Kushina Uzumaki. Several years later, 10 years before Naruto's birth, Kushina is kidnapped by Kumogakure in an attempt to steal Ninetales. Luckily, Kushina's Ninja Academy companion and Jirai's former mentee Minato Namikaze saves her. His rescue marks the beginning of a romance between the two and is proof that there can be healthy the relationships in Naruto. Hear that, Sakura? Do you hear me? Meanwhile, in Amegakure, Jiraiya leaves his team of Nagato, Yahiko, and Conan O'Brien three years after taking over their training. They form a group called the Akatsuki, whose mission is to bring the war to an end. One year before Naruto's birth, a certain glasses-wearing orphan shows up in Konoha. It's none other than Kabuto Yakushi. 
Meanwhile, the third Shinobi World War rages. When will it end? Minato's team of Kakashi Hatake, Obito Uchiha, and Rin Nohara are on the front lines. Rin is kidnapped and Kakashi and Obito fight to rescue her. Obito awakens his Sharingan in the process. Kakashi loses an eye, but they make it to Rin. A cave-in occurs and Obito sacrifices himself to save Kakashi from a falling boulder. As he dies, he gives Kakashi his Sharingan to replace his injured eye. However, it turns out that Obito isn't actually dead. <laughs> Madara has his goopy goon, I love my goopy goon, White Zetsu on the scene, ready to revive Obito and nurse him back to health, and create a vengeful villain in the process. If Shonen has taught me anything, it's that all it takes to create an OP villain is a life-altering trauma. Or just, I, feel, I guess any villain, really. Which brings us to the masked man himself, Toby. Obito adopts the pseudonym Toby along with his iconic whirly mask. Posing as Madara, Toby attempts to form an alliance with the Akatsuki, promising to aid them in their mission of peace. At the same time, Hanzo and Danso see the organization as a threat and seek to end the Akatsuki uprising. They battle the Akatsuki and the fight ends with Yahiko's death. Yahiko asks Nagato to continue the Akatsuki's legacy of peace. Nagato believes that peace can only be achieved by showing humanity how horrible life would be without it, so he takes on the pseudonym Pain and begins engineering a worldwide catastrophe. You know, in the name of peace. Sometime later, Rin is abducted by Madara, who seals Izabu, Three Tails, inside her, essentially making her into a ticking time bomb. Three Tails will emerge as soon as Rin and Kakashi return to Konoha. Understanding the stakes, Rin asks Kakashi to kill her in order to prevent Three Tails from destroying Konoha. Kakashi refuses, but Rin later commits suicide by jumping in the path of Kakashi's Chidori. Unbeknownst to Kakashi and Rin, a healing Obito slash Tobi has been watching the battle from the sidelines. Kakashi faints after realizing what Rin has done, and Obito secretly steps in to massacre the enemy shinobi who caused the death of his loved one. Nonetheless, he still blames Kakashi for not saving Rin. By the fall, the third shinobi war comes to an end, after which the third Hokage, Sarutobi, appoints Minato as the fourth Hokage so he can retire. Just a few months before Naoto's birth, in Sunagakure, the village hidden in the sand, the one-tailed beast, Shukaku, is sealed inside Gara while he's still in his mother's womb. He's born shortly thereafter, but his mother dies in childbirth. Finally, on the 10th of October, three days before my own birthday, Naruto is born to Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, and his wife, Kushina Uzumaki, Ninetales second Jinchuriki. Because it's Libra season, what up? Naruto's birth coincides with a lot of drama in Konoha. Obito, now under the guise of Tobi, returns to the village shortly before Naruto is born and extracts Ninetales from Kushina because her seal weakens when she enters labor. Minato forces Tobi out of the village, but with Ninetales free from Tobi's control, the fox spirit rages through the village. Minato fights Ninetales, and during the onslaught, he decides that the only way to save Konoha is to seal Ninetales in his newborn son. Ninetales' chakra is too immense for the infant, so Minato seals some of it within himself using a jutsu that takes the caster's own life. Kushina dies shortly after the seal is completed, leaving Naruto an orphan on the day of his birth. Naruto grows up not knowing who his parents are or that he is Ninetales' Jinchuriki. Sarutobi becomes the Hokage again following Minato's death. Four years later, Itachi Uchiha, a precocious shinobi and Sasuke's older brother, awakens his Sharingan gone after watching his friend Tenma Izumo murdered by a masked man. Wonder who that could be. When Naruto is seven years old, his future buddy Gara is going through some rough times in the village and in the sand. Gara and Shukaku are deemed too dangerous. Gara's own father, the Kazekage, orders Gara's execution. Gara's dearest friend and confidant, Yashimaru, is ordered to carry out the murder. Betrayed by the only person who has shown him kindness, Gara retreats further into his rage and self-loathing. He kills Yashimaru to save his own life, but suffers a mental breakdown in the process. Around the same time, another child finds a new mentor. Kabuto is manipulated into killing Nono, the person who took him in as a child. He meets Orochimaru while he's still grieving, and Orochimaru offers to train him. Orochimaru has spent the past several years doing horrifying human experiments and developing techniques to get power and extend his life. One such experiment involves kidnapping and experimenting on orphans. Yamato, who we'll talk more about later on, is one of these orphans. Orochimaru injected the orphans with Hachirama's DNA, hoping to awaken wooden release jutsu, a technique of Hachirama's that allowed him to suppress Jin but Yamato is the only one of the test subjects to survive and activate the ability. When Kabuto hits the scene, he turns out to be the perfect sidekick and is totally down to help out with the experiments. The two work to perfect Edo Tensei, or summoning, impure world reincarnation. A jutsu developed by Toborama and Hashirama that allows its user to reincarnate dead people using a human sacrifice and some DNA from the deceased. The next year, Itachi is tapped to join Root, an underground branch of Konoha's military run by Danso. He acts as a double agent against the Uchiha, reporting his clan's plans 
for a coup to Danzo and the third Hokage. Before the massacre, Itachi meets Toby, who he believes to be Madara. Toby agrees to assist him with the killings. Per Itachi's agreement with Danzo, Sasuke is the sole survivor. However, as a result of the trauma of his family's death, Sasuke is marked with the curse of hatred, a curse that the Uchiha clan bears and is said to have been passed down from Indra himself. This curse would manifest in Sasuke's edgelord demeanor and dark, menacing chakra. When Naruto is 13 years old, the story begins in earnest with the Ninja Academy's graduation exam. Naruto fails it for the third time. He steals a scroll containing forbidden techniques, including the multiple shadow clone jutsu, which he quickly masters. But the whole scroll thing was, of course, a setup. His mean teacher, Mizuki, tricked him into stealing the scroll to get Naruto kicked out of the Ninja Academy. Another teacher, Iruka, catches wind of Mizuki's plot and fights him. Mizuki is defeated, and enraged, Mizuki reveals that Naruto is hated because he is Ninetales, Konoha's greatest foe. Iruka steps in and allows Naruto to graduate from the Ninja Academy. A few days later, the Ninja Graduation Day ceremony takes place, and a new batch of students earn their rank. Among them are Sakura Haruno, her frenemy, Ino Yamanaka, Sasuke Uchiha, Master Strategist Shikamaru, Maru, Hinata Hyuga, Bugman Shino Aburame, Dogman Kiba Inuzuka, Beautiful Butterfly Choji Akimichi, and Best of Best Boys Rock Lee. After the final exam, which occurs a few days later, the new graduates are grouped into teams. Kakashi leads Team 7, which consists of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata as Team 8, and Asuma Saratobi accepts Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino as Team 10. Training commences, and within a couple months, Team 7 tackles its first mission. They have to escort a bridge builder to the land of the waves. Along the way, we get the first wild battle in Naruto. Team 7 faces off against Zabuza and his charge Haku. This fight has got to be one of the best first encounters in all all of manga. It showcases the first of many complicated, tragic villains who become a hallmark of the show. Team 7 prevails, but not before learning what it really means to be a shinobi. Like so many shonen, Naruto follows up the graduation exam with another exam, the Chunin exam. Just about six months after achieving Genin rank, a more seasoned Team 7 attempts to become Chunin, or journeyman ninja. In order to do so, they must face off against Genin rank shinobi from all of the five villages. In the second stage of the exam, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke encounter Orochimaru. Orochimaru trounces them and brands Sasuke with the Cursed Seal of Heaven, a curse mark that heightens Sasuke's physical abilities and chakra, but messes with his mind over time. Kakashi puts an additional seal on the curse mark in hopes of combating its negative side effects. After making it past the first three stages and into the preliminaries, the exams are put on hold for a month so the contestants can train up. Jiraiya meets Naruto and agrees to take him for a month of special training, and Kakashi does the same with Sasuke. Jiraiya removes a seal that has been blocking Naruto's chakra flow in hopes that it will allow him to better control Ninetales. He also teaches Naruto how to summon toads from Mount Myoboku. Meanwhile, Kakashi teaches Sasuke his Chidori technique. They return to Konoha for the third part of the Chunin exams, which are interrupted by the Konoha crush, Orochimaru's mission to destroy the village. However, it eventually emerges that Tsunagakure is just a pawn in a larger plan devised by Danso and the Akatsuki to destabilize Konoha and get rid of the third Hokage and the fourth Kazekage. Orochimaru unleashes his Edo Tensei technique, resurrecting the first two Hokage, Hashirama and Tobirama. Sarutobi dies defending Konoha from Orochimaru, although his last attack costs Orochimaru the use of his arms. As Konoha searches for a new Hokage, Jiraiya and Naruto set out in search of Lady Tsunade, Hashirama's granddaughter, one of the Sanin and a potential fifth Hokage for Konoha. Along the way, Jiraiya teaches Naruto the Rasengan technique, but he only manages to learn the first stage. Jiraiya and Naruto find Tsunade, who has become a degenerate gambler in the years after Dan's death. She refuses to return to Konoha until Naruto makes makes her a bet. If he can master the Rasengan technique in one week, Tsunade will come back. Of course, Tsunade loses the bet and becomes the fifth Hokage, because that's how that works. After the dust from Orochimaru's invasion settles, Sasuke challenges Naruto to a fight, having grown jealous of Naruto's rapid development. Naruto eventually agrees, and they use their new techniques against each other. Kakashi intervenes and deflects Naruto's Rasengan and Sasuke's Chidori into two water towers. Naruto's tower is completely destroyed, while Sasuke's tower is just kind of and Sasuke takes takes this as a sign that Naruto is beaten. His jealousy deepens and he decides to leave town. Kakashi finds him again and urges him to stay, but before Sasuke can make a decision, he encounters four shinobi from the village hidden in the sound. Sasuke uses his curse mark during the battle, and the sound four reveal that they have curse marks too. They convince Sasuke to seek out Orochimaru in order to gain more power. Sasuke agrees and leaves Konoha in the night. 
Naruto, Sakura, Shino, and Shikamaru go after Sasuke. When Naruto finally encounters him, it becomes clear that Sasuke will not return to Konoha and has embraced darkness thanks in part to the curse of the Uchiha. Naruto and Sasuke face off. Sasuke awakens his Sharingan for the first time since childhood and Naruto experiences the one-tailed transformation for the first time. Naruto fails to defeat Sasuke and bring him back to Konoha. And all of that, from the graduation exam to the tuning exams to Orochimaru's invasion, all happens when Naruto is just 13. <sighs> After being defeated by Sasuke, Naruto meets with Jiraiya, who warns him about the dangers of the Akatsuki. They have strayed from their mission of peace and have become a gang of brutal mercenaries. Naruto agrees to study under Jiraiya some more, and they embark on two years of training. Then we have that staple of so many anime, a time skip. And like all time skips in anime, our friends and enemies use it to level up. Naruto increases his control of Ninetales, and Sasuke ingratiates himself with Orochimaru. The Akatsuki haven't been sleeping either. They've decided to begin hunting and trapping Bijou in the husk of Ten Tails, the demonic statue, which Madara has summoned from the moon. They're chillingly successful and extract five tails from its Jinchuriki Han and seven tails from its Jinchuriki Fu, killing them in the process. At 16 years old, Naruto has left his days as a Ninja Academy failure behind him. With the Rasengan in better control of nine tails under his belt, Naruto is turning into a very formidable shinobi. At the conclusion of his training, Naruto and Jiraiya return to Konoha. Team Kakashi reunites without Sasuke to rescue Gara, who has become the fifth Kazekage in the wake of his father's death during the Konoha Crush. The Akatsuki still manage to capture Gara and extract his Biju Shikaku, killing Gara as a result. In the Akatsuki's cave, Chiyo, that old puppet lady, fights alongside Sakura against Sasori, a member of the Akatsuki and Chiyo's grandson. Sakura and Chiyo prevail, and Chiyo uses a special technique to revive Gara by giving her own life. Kakashi is hospitalized following the mission because he overused his Mangekyo Sharingan. A new team Kakashi is formed while he recovers, headed by Yamato. His wood release is why he's chosen to replace Kakashi. He alone can control Naruto's volatile bond with Ninetales. Sai, a member of Danto's underground organization, Root, also joins the team. Their next mission is to attempt to find Intel on Sasuke's location. The new Team 7 goes to a rendezvous point on a bridge. Once there, Yamato poses as Sasori, who has a planned meeting with Kabuto. Orochimaru and Yamato attempt to kill Sasori and soon learn of Team 7's deception. Naruto battles Orochimaru, and Sai slinks off to complete his real mission. Danto has asked him to gather intel on Orochimaru and kill Sasuke. During the battle, we see Naruto transform into his four-tailed form for the first time on the battlefield. After the battle, the rest of Team 7 discover Sai's mission and go to Orochimaru's hideout. They find that Sasuke has gained the upper hand over Sai. Team 7 narrowly escapes death at Sasuke's hands and returns to Konoha. The Akatsuki extract another bijou, two tails, from Yugito. Meanwhile, Sasuke grows bored and decides to kill Orochimaru before striking out on his own. Sasuke succeeds, but not before Orochimaru attempts to take over Sasuke's body using the living corpse reanimation technique. Sasuke turns the tables and instead takes over Orochimaru. Having defeated Orochimaru, Sasuke creates his own team out of Orochimaru's toadies, Suigetsu, Hozuki, Karin, and Jugo. Their mission? To kill Itachi. And believe it or not, we're still in Naruto's 16th year. Hard being a teen anywhere, but Naruto really has it rough, man. This is, ugh. Over in Amigakure, Nagato, now going by Pain, and his crew are continuing their agenda of waging war and creating chaos. Pain uses his special ability to resurrect six dead shinobi and fight through them using his Rinnegan and a technique known as the Six Paths of Pain. Ooh, what a f up name. Okay, Jiraiya goes to sort them out, and once there, he realizes that Pain is in fact his former mentee, Nagato. In one of the most heart-wrenching battles in all of Naruto, Jiraiya is killed by Pain. Meanwhile, Sasuke finally has the encounter with Itachi that has been so many years in the making. After deceiving his brother for so long, Itachi reveals that the Uchiha assassination was the work of Danzo, and that another Uchiha, Tobi, passing as Madara, helped him complete that mission. Itachi also reveals that his work for the Akatsuki is a deep undercover mission, and that extends use of the Mangekyo Sharingan, which he possesses, leads to blindness. He must steal his brother's eyes to activate the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. The brothers duel using their most powerful attacks. Sasuke is weakened by the fight, which allows Orochimaru to escape. He attempts to retake Sasuke's body, but Itachi kills him, which removes Sasuke's curse mark. Itachi approaches, seemingly to take Sasuke's eyes, but dies after touching Sasuke's forehead in a loving gesture from their childhood. As a result of the loss of his brother, Sasuke awakens his Mangekyo Sharingan. Tobi nurses Sasuke back to health and eventually gives him Itachi's eyes, awakening the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Of course, Naruto 
has to unlock some slick new techniques too, or else this wouldn't be shonen. After learning of Jiraiya's death, he goes back to Mount Nyoboku to learn Senjutsu, the sage arts. Since killing Jiraiya, Pain has hunted down and killed Six Tails Jinchuriki Utakata. Now only Naruto and Killer B, Eight Tails Jinchuriki, remain free. Pain then launches an attack on Konoha in search of Naruto and Nine Tails. After a battle that leaves Kakashi dead, Pain discovers that Naruto is on Mount Nyoboku. Pain decides to destroy Konoha out of frustration. Tsunade summons her slug familiar Katsuyu, who divides into many slugs to heal all of Konoha's injured. She distributes all of her chakra through Katsuyu, which leaves her in a coma. Pain unleashes a devastating jutsu that levels the city just as Naruto returns. The long and honestly very amazing battle between Naruto and Pain wages on until Pain gains the upper hand. He asks Naruto if there's another path to peace other than the one he's chosen. Before he can answer, Hinata intervenes, trying to save Naruto, and is ostensibly killed. The tides of the battle turn again. Eventually, Naruto tracks Pain's physical body down. Until now, he's been fighting against Pain's paths, the sixth dead shinobi that he's able to control remotely. After fending off a final attack, the two meet and talk about their former master, Jiraiya. Ultimately, Naruto decides to spare Nagato, even though he killed Jiraiya, saying that Nagato's death would only continue the cycle. Moved by this declaration, Nagato rethinks his life's work and uses the Samsung of heavenly life technique to revive all those who died in his attack on Konoha. He gives his own life in exchange. With Tsunade in a coma, Danzo takes advantage of the vacuum of power and is named Hokage Candidate just in time for a Gokage Kaidan or Summit of the Kages. Before he goes, he names Sasuke an enemy of Konoha and orders his assassination. At the summit, the other Kage accuse Danzo of orchestrating the Konoha crush with the Akatsuki as well as manipulating other Kage. Danzo denies it, but the summit is interrupted when Sasuke infiltrates and attacks the Kage. Danzo flees, only to be tracked down by Sasuke and Tobi. In the ensuing battle, Danzo reveals that those bad vibes we were getting off him this whole time were very valid because he's been hoarding other people's fancy eyeballs on his arm. Danzo dies at Sasuke's hands, for good reason. After the attack, the Kage agree to form the Allied Shinobi Forces, an army comprised of all the Five Nations fighters. Around the same time, Kabuto finds and confronts Tobi. Tobi tries to kill him, but Kabuto counters by using Edo Tensei to resurrect a bunch of dead Akatsuki, as well as the real Madara Uchiha. He forges an alliance with Tobi and agrees to lend an army of Edo Tensei fighters, including Madara, Itachi, and other familiar faces, to Tobi as long as Tobi gives him Sasuke at the end of the battle. And then, as a 17th birthday gift for Naruto, the fourth Shinobi World War begins. God damn it! Naruto doesn't know it yet. The Kage whisked him and Killer B to a remote island for more training that was actually a ploy to keep them away from the battle and to keep their biju out of the Akatsuki's hands. When they learn about the deception, Naruto and Killer B work together to escape and join the battle. <sighs> They quickly encounter Itachi and Nagato, who have been reincarnated. They're forced to fight, but Nagato and Itachi help them counter their attacks, and Itachi even manages to free his will from Kabuto's control. From here on out, the events of the Fourth Shinobi World War are kind of a cluster, but it's a great cluster. You get to see pretty much every hero and villain you've met along the way at the peak of their powers, fighting to save or end the world. Nothing more climactic than that. Because of Kabuto's messed up Edo Tensei, we even get a few final moments with some dearly departed characters. Uh, Except Jiraiya. I will do my best to summarize the most essential moments of the battles, but definitely go back and reread or rewatch it yourself because there is so much I couldn't include here. Like how Madara drops a whole meteor on the battlefield twice. So, yeah, please give it a rewatch. On the main battlefield, the Allied Shinobi forces, aided by Naruto's shadow clones, root out and seal Yamato's reincarnated fighters. The Kage decide to try to take down Madara themselves, and Naruto and Killer B break off to fight Tobi who is using Pain's Six Paths technique to resurrect the other Jinchuriki to fight alongside him. During the battle, Son Goku, the Four Tails, and not the Goku you know, tells Naruto that they wish to be released from Tobi's control and helps Naruto remove the black receiver that Tobi uses to suppress the beasts. Meanwhile, Sasuke follows a reincarnated Itachi to a cave where Kabuto is hiding and controlling his resurrected army. Sasuke attempts to kill Kabuto, but Itachi points out that even if Kabuto is killed, his army won't be defeated. They must instead force Kabuto to release the Edo Tensei. The Uchiha boys wage a mental battle against Kabuto, trying to outwit him so they can force him to undo his wicked jutsu. Oh my god. They eventually prevail 
and Kabuto's army disintegrates. Madara manages to escape being sent back to the grave by unsealing Yamato's Edo Tensei. After laying a smackdown on the Kage, Madara goes to find Tobi. Elsewhere in battle, Tobi uses Chakra from the Gold and Silver Brothers, two warriors reincarnated through Edo Tensei who carry some of Kurama's Chakra after an encounter with the beast hundreds of years earlier. That Chakra combined with one of Eight Tails' tentacles allows the demonic statue of the Outer Path to begin its transformation into Ten Tails. During the fight, Kakashi discovers that his Sharingan is linked to Tobi's. They both teleport to the same dimension when using the Kamui technique. While in this dimension, Kakashi realizes that Tobi is in fact Obito. <sighs> Just let me stop real quick. Madara reaches the scene before Tentail's transformation is complete. He fights Kakashi, Might Guy, Naruto, and Killer B, and when Tentails is awakened, he and Tobi jump on its head in order to control it. The allied shinobi forces join the fray, and Obito is forced to retreat into another dimension using his kamui when he's knocked from Tentails' head. Sasuke still hasn't made it to the main conflict. Instead, he manages to reincarnate Orochimaru using one of Orochimaru's curse marks. He asks Orochimaru to help resurrect the first four Hokage, so they can counsel him on which side of the battle to join. The Hokage convince him to defend Konoha and they all go to the battlefield. Obito rides ten tails into the fray, facing a barrage of attacks from Naruto, Killer B, and the allied shinobi forces. After launching many devastating attacks on the allied forces, Obito attempts to wipe them out once and for all using a tailed beast ultimate attack that's pretty much a concentrated chakra ball. He fires the tailed beast ball from ten tails aimed at a short range. Killer B and eight tails force the tailed beast ball back down ten tails throat, injuring it in the process. Naruto then distributes Ninetales Chakra amongst the remaining allied shinobi forces, giving them a boost. Minato, having been reincarnated by Orochimaru and Sasuke, steps in to restrain Tentails. Obito then re-emerges onto the battlefield and tries to control Tentails once again. Madara steps in, attempting to resurrect himself at the cost of Obito's life in order to become Tentails Jinchuriki. Obito resists him and seals Tentails in his own body instead. Obito eventually expels Tentails so it may transform into a giant tree in an attempt to enact Kaguya's original plan of locking Earth in an infinite Tsukuyomi. The tree draws chakra from the allied shinobi forces. The more chakra it draws, the faster a Rinnegan eye will blossom on top of the tree, bringing about the infinite Tsukuyomi. As the tree grows, Naruto, B, and Gara attack Obito and use their power to draw the other tailed beasts out of him. This leaves Obito vulnerable to attack, and Black Zetsu does the deed. He takes over Obito and forces him to perform the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique. But thanks to the demonic statue Chakra, Obito manages to survive. When a White Zetsu returns Madara's Rinnegan to him, he's able to reseal the beast, including eight and nine tails, into the statue, reviving ten tails once again. He becomes ten tails next Jinchuriki. Naruto is dying as a result of nine Tails extraction, so a resurrected Minato seals the part of Ninetales chakra that he holds back in Naruto. Black Zetsu interrupts the transfer, but in the confusion, Obito breaks free of Black Zetsu's control, reconsiders his life of evil, and rescues Naruto. Elsewhere on the battlefield, another change of heart takes place, and Kabuto heals Sasuke, who is dying after receiving a critical blow from Madara. On the verge of death, both Sasuke and Naruto encounter the Sage of the Six Paths, who rejuvenates their chakra and endows them with a special power. He gives Sasuke a Rinnegan and Naruto the power to harness the chakra of all of the tailed beasts. Madara can't stand up to the duo's newfound power, so he tracks down Obito in order to reclaim his other missing Rinnegan. As soon as he has it, he returns to the battlefield and casts the infinite Tsukuyomi. Sasuke manages to protect himself and the other members of Team 7 from the technique. Black Zetsu re-emerges and takes control of Madara. He summons Kaguya to take over Madara, Kaguya transports herself and the others to her own dimension to fight them. Still unable to face off against Naruto and Sasuke's combined power, Kaguya puts them in separate dimensions and focuses on fighting Naruto. In the meantime, Sakura teams up with a repentant Obito to reunite Sasuke and Naruto. Kaguya launches a final attack on Sasuke and Naruto, but Kakashi and Obito protect them. It costs Obito his life, but Obito temporarily endows Kakashi with his Mangekyo Sharingan. Together, all of Team 7 attacks Kaguya and seals her in her own dimension. Team 7 and Madara are returned to the real world, and the fourth shinobi world war comes to a close. But of course, it can't end that easily for Naruto and Sasuke, who have one final battle to fight. Back in the real world, Naruto and Sasuke can end the infinite Tsukuyomi. However, Sasuke decides he must kill the Kage and the Tailed Beast before doing so, so he can become a supreme power in the world in order to enforce peace. Clearly, he has not learned anything from this whole saga. Naruto disagrees and faces off with Sasuke once again at the Valley of the End. 
They fight to exhaustion, ending the battle with a mighty punch that causes both of them to lose their arms. When they wake in the morning, Sasuke acknowledges Naruto's victory. Luckily, you only need one arm to hold hands, which is what Naruto and Sasuke must do to end the infinite Tsukuyomi. They end it, and the world slowly wakes from the jutsu. Kakashi becomes the sixth Hokage, and with Naruto's support, he decides to absolve Sasuke of his crimes. Finally, at 25 years old, eight years after the end of the fourth Shinobi War, Naruto succeeds Kakashi as the seventh Hokage, achieving his lifelong dream. So what did we learn today? That all it takes is an evil space alien, a scrappy orphan, and some untamable spirit animals to make one of the most beloved stories of all time. And even though Naruto's timeline stretches back a thousand years, all of the wildest battles take place over like three to four years. Um, does that mean I could have made this video a lot shorter? No? You sure? Hey, I'm Yudoye. Thanks for watching Getting the Robot. If you like this video, please subscribe. It's so much. <laughs>